So my name is Chukudi Utazi, and I work here at the Center for Memories. Um, the Center for Memories we promotes Igbo history, Igbo culture, Igbo excellence. If any nine MEB we feel Salon Igbo. And our exhibition here uh, obviously talks about you know the movement, the journey, like it's titled Uzoije. Watago. So before this exhibition, uh, this is like our eleventh or tenth exhibition. We've had several other exhibitions. From the panels you see around the compound, those panels are from our very first exhibition that was opened in December 2017. It's titled Holland Igbo and we use this to showcase you know Igbo contribution to the world uh, the wonderful works of Igbo men and women in different areas like sports politics law literature arts you know and all that we've also had another exhibition titled Reviving the Lost Technologies of Ndibu and in that exhibition that ran from 2018 through 19 <clears throat> we we showcased you know Igbo technology before the coming of the white man that exhibition was broken down into categories basketry, um, iron smelting, blacksmithing, wood carving, uh, you know, even clothes weaving. Yes, a lot of segments just to show how we developed technologically for the coming of the white man. And from that, we moved on to a permanent exhibition that's still running the one on the Biafra War, titled Ozemena. That one tells the story of the Biafra War, it's still there in our gallery. And in 2021, we opened a new exhibition titled More Igbo Masquerades. Okay, so uh, we also had a short exhibition in early 2022, you know, titled Nkanozo. From that, we moved on to another exhibition titled Odinani. And now we have um, Uzoije coming up. We still have subsequent exhibitions and we'll get to know about them as we progress. So um, Uzoije is um, it's not a solo exhibition. It's not. Um, one artist performing or exhibiting. We have about um, 14, yeah, about 14 of them. Yes, but it's curated by one of them, obviously. We can have only one curator. And we have um, Ugonna, Ugonna Ibekwe. One more never, of course. We could let's clap for him. It's not easy. So I, I, left, I left the office very late sometime this week. And by the time I'll come back the next morning, just a few hours, the whole place had changed. You know, beautiful artworks everywhere. I was wild. I quickly did the video and sent to my colleagues. They're like, I, I, when did this happen? The transformation was so beautiful to see. And I know that, you know, we are eager to see these artworks, but we should just hold on a little. I'm going to have a short conversation with Ugonna and, you know, some other artists who are here. Uh, they would walk us through the thought process, you know, so I'll try to pick their brain about what led to some of the things that we'd see. And then when we go inside as well, um, they'll elaborate more on the art pieces. There. So I'll just um, have my seat and um, we'll kick it off. All right, so um, first of all, I'll have you know, my panelists, so to say, introduce themselves, after which um, I would question them. So from my left. Okay, my name is Ibunna Idokono on the third. I'm an art historian. It's the guy that I want to ask that. <laughs> but I'm definitely an art historian. Thank you. Um, you're welcome, Mr. Ogunna. And to my right? Um, it will be nice if the name is um, just one of school graduated this year and I major in painting. All right. Thank you. Please, let's clap for them again. So, I like the fact that you started with, you just came out of school. Because someone was, if I be the Onuba, Nsuka Art School. Yeah, I didn't know about Nsuka Art School um, until we started planning this exhibition. So, um, let, me, let me ask you, what's... What is Nsuka Art School? Yeah, let's first, first start with the idea of where the place is actually. Okay. Um, art is just about what happened in Nsuka immediately after the war, which saw a total change of the syllables. Um, after the war, a lot of the Westerners left because of the tribalistic um, things that happened during that time. And um, a man by name Uchi Okeke was asked to come down here and reorganize things. Obviously, after the war, you know it's going to be a ghost town. A lot of things were destroyed. And the Princess Alexander of the Tourism had left holes in them. But then these people believed that they had to keep going in what they described as the never die spirit, which is the Insoka spirit. 
and I've come to understand, I've come to learn that it's also the motto of um, Rangers International Open Football Club. Yeah, never so, see that. Yeah, never see that. So I feel I, that draws a linkage. Now, when Ucho Keke came down here, he was given the sole responsibility of changing the syllables, adjusting it to something really African. Because before then, we were making use of what the white man brought, the models of teaching and everything. So it was like, we have our own culture. So he created something, he termed it the natural synthesis. And what does it mean? It's an ideology that fuses Western techniques with our own African idea. So they were like the whites, they have their techniques which they use to make their art. And um, if you go in here, you see different techniques, people exploring watercolor, people exploring painting, people applying different techniques to bring out whatever imagination they have in their head and in a piece of work. So it was like, we should get what they have. We should not copy them completely. We should take the useful Western techniques and fuse it with our own ideas, our own philosophies and create new works of art. You know, so when he did this, he asked the students around to go to their villages and source for information and source for different things about their culture, about their they should know about themselves. And by knowing about themselves, they get to write these things. Because Africans were believed to have never been people who would sit down and write, you know, books or history, but then they wrote with the artifacts, the king that the obesity, you know, things like that. Those are things that help them document their history as opposed to the, the white people who would write, you know. Although we had writing systems like in Sibiru, of which most of us got to know about more recently. So then, when Uchokege did the student returned with so much data, and um, he had already started this dream earlier enough, way back, with the Zarianists in Zaria where he studied. They were actually called the Zaria Rebels because they believed that they actually should um, talk about themselves and not completely be messed in what the white man has brought. Okay, so um, when he brought down this ideology to Nsoka here, they started searching for the arts that we normally did before the white man came and the point of departure became Uli. Now Uli could mean one thing and the same thing. It could mean one thing and another thing at the same time. Uli is the port. I don't, I don't know if most of you must have heard about it. You get the berries and you extract the pigment. Now this port, this single thing, was what inspired the designs on the bodies which were primarily done by Igbo traditional women. And it also inspired other things that they did, like they painted murals on shrine walls. You know, they did so many other things with it. But besides it, most of us do not know, but they had medicinal purposes as well. So there was so much to that, aside from the aesthetics. So when he brought it to Nsoka, now, terminated the Nsoka Art School, when he brought the whole ideology to Nsoka, they got into the villages and learned how to make these things. They learned from the old women, and they were looking for a way to modernize these artworks, to modernize these ideas. And they had to start with the Uli. Now, different artists were made to learn some of the motifs. And what are the motifs? They were simply summaries of the world around them. What were they trying to do? They were not trying to copy everything exactly like the way the white man would always make representational drawings or representational paintings. They were trying to extract the soul of the work so that instead of seeing um, the, 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 the leg of a leopard the way it is, you just have footprints of a leopard and that would tell you that this is a leopard. So it was more poetry for me, you know. So when they did these things, people started exploring different things. People started questioning, going into their villages and making things like that. And they began to use these ideas and make paintings with oil, with acrylic, with Western media. So the whole idea of the Nsoka Art School is deeply rooted in the idea of the natural synthesis, which saw the fusion of Western, useful Western ideas and our own philosophies. And that was where it started. Yeah, that was a very extensive um, response. As a matter of fact, I needed to hear all of this because just like I mentioned earlier, I didn't know about Nsoka at school. Um, I was just sharing snippets here and there. You know, I studied in Nsoka too. I mean, I should get a round of applause for that, right? <laughs>
Yes, I'm a proud Super Lion, um, class of 2015. I am. Oh, I'm not. You're not, if you're a Neville, you're not a Super Lion. Oh, so we are Lions forever? Yes, yes. Oh, okay, so another round of applause. I'm a Lion forever. Yeah, you're a Super Lion. All right, um, anyway, just I was, like I was saying, thank you so much, Mr. Obina. So, you know, the partnership between the Center for Memories and the Nsuka Art School, you know, to put up this particular exhibition is very timely because of a lot of things you've said. You talked about the synthesis between, you know, um, useful, in your words, youthful Western culture, and then our Igbo, youthful Western techniques, yes, and our own Igbo, you know, ideas. ideas and all that, yes. And I hope we're going to see a lot of that, you know, when we go into the exhibition room. But let me come over to you, Mr. Ugonna. Um, so I'm going to be a, a little more practical with this question. Um, I see you. This is not your first uh, curation, right? Eleven ton, so you are an OG. Yeah, in Gen Z terms. It's alright, but um just walk us through, you know, the journey of curating this exhibition. What was what was it like for you? It's not like I had more experience than all of them. It's just that um nature has made some people placed in some certain way. And some people just virtually have to be visionaries and leaders of the rest. And if you're a leader you don't get to even lead if you don't have followers. If you don't, like I posted on my status the other day, um, who decides where we are born? Who decides where we are born? Sometimes we are just born and we just take form and we just find ourselves, we are doing this and people expect us to just do it and we just flow. You understand? So that's how it is for me. It's not like I just woke up one morning and say, oh, there has to be this and I'm starting this way. I just saw myself. When I entered fine arts to do fine arts, I've had a long history with soccer school from my family background. But when I entered finance, I basically wanted to do graphics. But when I entered finance, I heard that there was art history. And I was interested in it, and I began to do art history. And by an art historian, part of my job is to create. So that was how I found myself creating exhibitions time and time and time again. Almost every month, I'm creating one exhibition or the other. So, um, the journey started with the fact that um, I've created most exhibitions, but I've never created the class exhibition before. You understand? Because of political reasons. And so, I wanted to create the class exhibition to mark the class departure from school, basically. So, that was how the idea came about. Um, some people fell out with the idea from the onset, some people ran with it and at some point they fell out either because they were unable to meet my high demands or, or they were unable to meet one or two things. So at the end I just ended up with 15 people, 14 people, 14 people down the line and I tried as much as possible to select each work to tally with what I wanted to present that revolved around Igbo identity. So basically all the works here uh, have a way to present your identity. It takes you back to that idea of who are you? What if you say you are this person? What makes you this person? A poem writer wrote about our hair that defies gravity. The African hair, that African hair defies gravity because of the way it extends up continuous upwards now um the artist's job is to look at that as he has mentioned and present it in such a way that it makes aesthetic sense it still retains its value and is preserved over time so as artists most of us have been trained to look at the culture we live in and basically in this situation i'm looking at the rhetoric of modernism through the lens of the visual artists in terms of um it's very it's a general thing i've picked up as a creator or something in terms of looking at how do the young people view Igbo modernism there are some certain things we don't do again it's certain things we've left off can those things be brought back take out the essence out of it and let us project the value that our forefathers thought of when they created these things some of the cultures are not necessarily bad. It's just that 
some of the even the sculpture works are not necessarily bad but when the white men came they first of all baptized us with the fact that we cannot make art that's one then two they looked at all the artworks and said it is fetish thereby changing the meaning of those artworks changing the root values of those artworks artworks we are just looked at and rounded up the masculine was just looked at of another art as something fetish it removed the fact that the masquerade has a function on male initiation it removed the fact that the masquerade had a function of entertainment it removes so many facts in the question so people now look at things and say something that would have been a show of strength before is now looked at and say it is fetish you just another show of strength okonko beating the cat and things fall apart was not about being spiritual it's about show of strength but the white man looked at it and said, this is, this is your wrestling, is fetish. Yet, if you read Richard Rice, the black boy, you see them going over there to connect two black heads on the streets and make them fight. Until one man looked at it and said, boy, why is it that always these people are gathered when this fight is going on? There has to be something going on. That was how he found out what was going on. But then he had convinced you it was fetish. Something that was just a show of strength. An authority so um that's what the artists i create the young artists i create try to reflect on and bring out aesthetics with it that can be placed that can generate the ones and what i call the ones and zeros conversation you look at this work it's beautiful yes but can it go beyond that beauty can it generate conversations that look down at our roots as Africans? Can you generate conversations that look down at our ideologies? And can those conversations be placed publicly and we don't see ourselves as doing fetish things? Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's give a round of applause for that brilliant response. So um, I'll still ask your opinion about you know some of the things you said. Uh, but before that, let me just let you know that these are not the only exhibiting artists who and they don't actually take the front um, seats or something. They are just privileged to be by my, to flank me, to be on my side. You know, John, right here. Anyway, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask. Uh, you know, some of other uh, exhibiting artists. I will ask you some questions. So, um, please get ready for, for my for my questions. Uh, but before then, let me come back to you, Mr. Obina. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so I just wanted to you know hear your thoughts. So here at the center we we promote about history and culture mm -hmm. you know we if you if you take a look you know over our boards there you got for chatandibo you know so that's all that's like a summary of what we do we just we are here to um you know keep our memories for yesterday for today and for tomorrow as well yes so i, I just wanted to let uh, hear from you what do you think is the role of art he has spoken a lot about Afri um, Igbo modernism everything has a purpose the butterfly has a purpose. The ants have their purpose. The earthworm has a purpose. And sometimes it's disappointing to find out that it's only man that sometimes does not know his or her purpose. You know? Because down here in a society where art is not always you know, giving that full patronage, the doctors, the lawyers, they are always there at the apex as people who are being considered as you know the high professions. And that discourages the children who have these talents. Now, as artists who come from this society, in what my professor has described as an underdeveloping society, we should know our purpose. Just like the doctor treats and the engineer is built, what is the role of the artist in the society? Is he here just to create beautiful things? Or can he contribute his own quota to see that this country becomes better? These are the questions that we are faced with. We come from a long lineage of people, artists who are great, who did great things, and they know what they were here for. And we have had the privilege of opening the books, getting to know the secrets. And by going back, we've gone back to peak and know what we're actually here for. Sometimes people, artists might averagely be seen as people that create beautiful things, you know, you create the, the I call them sirens. When people see the works, they're like, wow, wow, wow. That's not just what artists are here to do. Aside from preserving, artists should reinvent. Artists should make people. Artists are, in our first year, we study philosophy. So we didn't just go in and we are just painting. Artists should be intelligent. 
they should be able to write poetic at that and so that when they speak their artistry flows through their words and it's evident in their paintings and even when they write you can actually tell that these people come from a place so for us who just came out of school most people might think okay they see you, you're an artist i say you get a womb <laughs> you know that's just a normal cliche question but then um i find that really funny these days and i feel it's also an avenue to um really enlighten them and tell them what we are actually here from like man calm down that's not what we're here to do you know and this is another show of calm down this is what we are here for you know so um we graduated this year you know and we've looked back and we've seen what have become of other graduates in the past. Most of them, they are talented. They don't end up practicing art. Every artist has a voice. And for every artist that stops to create, there's a voice, there's a, there's a unique message that just died, you know? And in as much as we might not, we might take it for granted, the artist or these artists might have had the skill, but they never had the will. And the will must always be stronger than the skill. And even as we progress in this, in this, in these years, in the recent years, I don't I keep saying I don't fall in line with the idea of the whole Gen Z thing. I believe everything has been there's nothing new under the sun. Our ancestors they they written these law these laws long ago, these philosophies. So we just have to find a way of tuning it into what's happening now. They'll tell you about the Iwebike, which is also an aspect of the Nsoka spirit coming together to move. You know, with one ant, you can always, you know, kill it. But then when the ants come in multitudes, you will know where to start. Same thing with locusts, you know. So that's the spirit that you look at the Nigerian map, you see the Easterners, you see the Northerners, you see how small we were. You, you talk about the beer friend story, we were able to combat them for three years. That was because we were able to stand together. And that's the same spirit that these artists who know their roles here have come to play by moving together by exhibiting together by talking about the things we are here for for me going down now into the role of an artist in a country like nigeria the sensibility now is is a tribalistic one whether you like it or not and we saw that play out in the recent election we saw that play out in the recent election i was talking to my friend who was um, a designer I was talking to him about, okay, what do we do as the greys, that's the old ones, make way for the flowers, the budding ones? What do we do about the situation of our country? He was like, what can we do that we cannot do anything? You know? And that's really worrisome, to say the least. Because if you cannot do anything, that means you're, you're about to go down six feet, six, six feet if time is not taken. And for me as an artist, I know that art is not just, you know, something that gives you the opportunity to create beautiful things. It's a weapon. We've seen people write things, we've seen people create works of art that have been really controversial and have made people ask questions over the years. Our first visit to the Center for Memories, we saw them with what they were doing. Before that, we visited the National War Museum in Umahia because these things are kept for the children to see. But like Bomali would say, if you do not know who you are, people will ask you, who are you? And you will not have answers. But if you know who you are, nobody would ask you where you come from. And you also know where you are headed. So what they are doing here is a beautiful job. After seeing what happened in um, um, what was being preserved at the National Museum in Umar here, we, 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 are, we, are really, we, are really, we are really heartbroken. You know, I think, I feel, I think one of us um, here was already tearing up by the time we left the place. And we're not allowed to take pictures you know, of some places there, but as artists, the pictures are imprinted in our minds and we, are, we know what to talk about. And when I say we, are, we know what we are here for, I actually mean what I just said. And now for this exhibition, um, you find artists who are just in their different journeys, you know, doing their own thing, expressing themselves the way they want to. What does art mean? Art is self-expression. But then while expre expressing yourself, you might also talk about the beautiful things, but you should also remember that the politics should never be separated from the poetics. And something I always say that if we concentrate so much on the poetics, that's the beautiful thing. You know, you're trying to show them, you know, colors, colors and you know beautiful faces. What happens to the poetics? What happens to the politics rather? Because I remember 
trying to leave my house on a Monday morning to go and buy artworks. And we we met the whole iPod people. It was, I thought I thought I would actually die that day. That actually sparked something in my brain. That if you do not take care of the politics, nobody would feel safe to come around and listen to your poems. Which is why Achebe was always political, even in his writings. He could write about the beautiful ones, he gives you the poems, but he never disregarded the politics because it's very, very important. And as people who would also give birth to children, we are past 18 years of age, we are past the days of dreaming and, you know, it's about time to face reality and contribute what we can contribute in seeing that this place becomes better. And now I'll finalize with this, that we are here is because we have been groomed by learned teachers, by a long history that boasts of arts greats and legends who know what they are doing. You talk about Nsoka, you talk about Nsoka Art School, you talk about the Department of Fine and Applied Arts in Nsoka. It's a school where, it's a school that does the thing it does in a way that you can't find it anywhere else in this world, you know? And the teachers there, the people there, we we'll call them our parents, they have groomed us in this way. Because if a child behaves in some certain way, there must have been traits of his current behavior in his parents. So we've been growing him that way and we know what we are here for. And having seen everything that's happening around the Center for Memories, we know that it's, 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 it's not just for us to absorb and know that, okay, this thing happened. What do we do with the history? What do we do with the artifacts? How do we reinvent these things? How do we call out the great things that our ancestors have left behind? How do we exploit the artistic and cultural resources that have been left behind for us? The Greeks have done a lot with their mythology. How far have we gone? The Chinese with their calligraphy, what have we done over the years? These are the questions we have to ask ourselves. ourselves. But then the, the artists are here now. Your children are here. But they, they can't do it alone, which is why we need the patronage of the audience, the people. Because the art belongs to the people. Back then, when you create an artwork, you don't sign your name on it. It belongs to the people, you know. But they know you. They know you are skilled in this. So we know our role as far as I'm concerned. And as I've been explaining all along, we know our roles. And we're here. We're just starting out. And we implore you all to, you know, embrace us, accept us. Not just um, about seeing the world, but to encourage us to go out more and produce, to go out more and speak out, you know. Because art is really powerful. And like I told you, it's a weapon. And we know about these things and that's what we are here for thank you very much thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you so much um mr obina um i like the fact that you know as you were closing you took some time to eulogize the Osaka art school you know it's not easy to have um young people come together to do stuff like this it's very commendable and um another round of applause for exhibiting artists please I like the fact that we have a lot of ladies, you know, because at the Center for Memories, we are a very gender um, conscious organization. All right. Yes. Yeah, so we always try to maintain gender balance. So let me ask the lady to my left. Um, there's, there's something that he said. He said, whenever one artist stops creating, we've lost one unique voice. Right. Yeah. And that was that was a very deep um, statement that he made right there. So I just wanted to, you know, hear from you. What was it? What was the inspiration, you know? Why, why did you think it wise to participate in this exhibition titled Uzeije? My name is Goodness Nabeze. The idea of um, for Uzeije came um, when we thought it wise to share our diverse individual perspectives, our approaches. We are from different sections of the Fine Applied Art Department, from painting, sculpture, ceramics, fashion, textile. So we are really diverse and. Each individual does have a unique voice, just like my voice is different from your voice. That's the way it is for artists. That, that's when you talk about artistic, artistic style and expression. And um, every artist is unique. And that's when we talk about authenticity. Every person's handwriting is not the same. They are diverse. And that's actually what brings 
um, enjoyment into the world. That's what makes the world interesting and not just black and white. So UZIJ is our way of telling our story um, through our individual unique voices to say, okay, this is me. My name is goodness. This is my experience. This is my roots. This is my upbringing. This is my artistic influence. This is how I express myself as art is a medium of um, self-expression. So that's why I deemed it wise to also be part of this. We are like a family trying to show the beauty and hermeneutics of art to the world. So it's really an honor being part of this exhibition. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And um, you know, congratulations to all our exhibiting artists. I mean, it's not easy. Sometimes I really wonder at, um, you know, the I don't know how you artists create it, but um, after the doctors, the other people I really respect are the artists because I don't know how they come up with all these things. I always stand in awe in front of artworks. And um, at this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, um, I would have to cut this conversation short. Uh, we'll go into the exhibition room right now and um, we'll see the exhibits. While we are going through the exhibition, the um, artists will also be explaining, you know, some of the artworks that we'll see um, briefly where we can, you know, network, feed our eyes, and then we'll call it a day at the end. Um, it is our sincere delight to have all of you together for the opening of this exhibition. We're happy to see the artists who are going to showcase their works, and then the guests who are here to delight themselves in the beauty of the poetry and the politics. You know, and uh, without further ado, I'd like to invite my respected friend and brother, Mr. Richie Asiebu Jr., the General Manager of Urban Radio, to please declare this um, exhibition open. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, by the powers vested in me, <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. I formally declare this exhibition uh, open. So then by the curator, uh, Mr. Ogonna, to walk us through the exhibition. Thank you. Mr. Gunner. Thank you. So can we, can we? Okay. Good afternoon. <laughs> Once again, good afternoon. Welcome to UZJ as curated by Gunna Igwekwe, aka the pen. Okay. Um, I'm not so much of a speaking person, I'm more of a writing person. Unfortunately. So I have 13 artists, 14 artists here, and I'll begin, I'll just do the quick tour and they'll stand by their works and we we'll get to ask them the individual questions. So I'll just do the quick tour, introduce the artists to the work and give you a skeletal view of, I'll just give you a survey of all the works and then you can have the conversations around the work, depending on which one appeals to you more. I don't even get, then if you have any questions as relating to sales or something, you can reach out to the director or him. That's not here to answer you on that. Thank you very much. Okay. So starting with here, this is a 10 by 10 inches work of every artist is beaten, except one. So every artist you see their work there, this is a 10 by 10 combination of their work. So this is your identity. If this is like the Gubike principle of us coming together to form one art piece, but we are still different in our unique way. So let's begin here. Okay. Okay. Um, this is by Goodness in Abereze. She's a painter. She's exploring the Jagalan. Goodness, where are you? It's, that's the artist. She's exploring, she's exploring the Jagalan and some metaphorical things that have to do with the human behavior, human psyche, and human understanding. Thank you. This is Cynthia. Cynthia. Is Cynthia here? OK, Cynthia is not here. OK, this is by Cynthia. Nadja for Cynthia. This is by Miraculese. Miraculese is using wool to explore, to create images, to create sometimes abstract images like you see like that and she also uses acrylic and watercolor sometimes most of, sorry acrylic and oil paints miracle where are you where is she okay that's miracle okay this is a standalone piece is by Ibeku Gona. 
Thank you. <laughs> okay, basically, this piece talks about CC. It's from a series called the CC series, where you get the phone, you get the girl snapping, always attached, personalizing her phone. Attached to her phone, always snapping, always showing chicken wing and there. Right? This our tester was, this is, a, this is from a fashion student, Esther. This one. So, this is by Esther, she's a fashion student, so she crochets and she sews clothes. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Esther was looking at you, I was saying, there's something, this thing has been going around. Okay, okay. okay. Okay, this is by Fostina. Fostina is not here, but... Oh, Fostina, how are you doing? Okay, this is by Fostina. Also in fashion, she's a fashion designer. She explores with jute bag to make materials. Whether for aesthetics or wearable, she has the answers to it. Or you yourself have the answers to it. Because sometimes we've seen people wear wet things these days. You understand? So it's possible that someone can still wear it. Okay, this is by Onyeja Kwebube. Unfortunately, Onyeja Kwebube is not around. He has an interview in Lagos, so he went for an interview. Okay. This is by Emmanuel. This is by Emmanuel. So, he, so this is by Emmanuel. This is charcoal on paper, right? Okay, this is charcoal on paper. It's on a cover paper. So, trust me, yes, that is on a cover paper. And they call it by the brand name, I call it by the professional name. So, I can ask it with paper so it can last without being damaged. So, this is by August. August, okay, that's August, and that's the man in charge of mounting all this. August has been always in charge of mounting my exhibitions around and he has always done a professional job so thank you all for the work you do he has been here since the last few days getting this done okay and we're talking to talking about him now i remember that my cultural statement is there so please you can always go there to read the cultural statement there's no need to show you back so you can go there and read the cultural statement that gives you a brief summary about the exhibition thank you this is by open qualifying emos He's a graphic artist. This is a digital work. It's printed. It's totally done from scratch on computer. Unfortunately, he cannot be here because of his health. Thank you. This is by Ibobina Eze. Obina owns this work and then the two the, the drawing on the other side of the board. Yeah. So Ibobina Eze, of course, we are familiar with this place. Who is this? Yeah. <laughs> okay. We are familiar with this place and he tries to glorify our own Ujugo and try to give him all that glamour and glandor. Thank you very much. This is by Samuel. Samuel. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is by Samuel. He's a painting major, so he tries to communicate with his painting. And this is a self portrait of his journey in school. In this painting, you can see him holding the light up of the Soka School. You can see him, you can see the Afas logo, that's even the Afas logo. You can see the UNN logo also, the UNN, UNN, the UNN logo. You can see the lighthouse also. You can see the palm trees that are to be on Soka. Thank you. This is oh. <laughs> okay. This mask <laughs> This is by John Bosco. John Bosco, where are you? John Bosco. So this is by John Bosco. Um, the man called El Anasue started picking bottle tops and grinding them together, and now he is now a global sensation. He just held his time space and honorary award by Kayonda. That's a Honda motor that you know, That's that. and that is vision. Took, as I describe it, let me describe the way I describe it. We're talking about it in the news. It took at, at World One, it took New York this way and did them like this. 
for three solid days. So, almost everybody in soccer school likes the bottle top. We explore it. <laughs> you understand? So, this is the expression of the bottle top. Okay. This is by Eku Ebenezer. Eku Ebenezer is a painting major. Eku. Okay. Eku Ebenezer is a painting major. He explores coffee. Yeah, he uses coffee. This is coffee. So this is how it's done with coffee, apart from the thing you are saying here. So he explores coffee and he has a story to go with it. Okay, this talks about the aftermath of a marriage ceremony. The aftermath of a marriage ceremony, where the man has to do all the burden of thinking about how to settle his bills and the rest of them like that. For me, I prefer to come with money and <laughs> all those gifts sometimes. But, so for some of us who have not seen and to the poor before, this is an unicorn. When it's broken, it brings out the black dye that is, first of all, translucent. Have you? First of all, translucent, then gradually turns black. So, this is a classic unicorn. Mm, it's not for sale. Let me just mention it. <laughs> okay. We carry it, we glorify it, and we carry it all around because it's just the one we have for now. So, it's not for sale. So, this is by Obi Naizbe, and this is the women in his life. Right? This is the woman in his life. I explore, my name is Witness Jonathan I explore the progress of gyrating lines, gyrating organic lines, and then colors, the effects of colors on the human psychology, and the continuously gyrating organic lines symbolize continuity and connectivity in nature. How everything leads to the other. We are all part of nature as human beings and how the cycle just goes on and on. Being um, of the African descent, Nigerian descent, and being raised in an Igbo household in Anambra State, this affects my themes and the aesthetic sensibilities I explore. For example, this work titled Omi, which means self, speaks about the topic of self validation. It was inspired after I learned about the 1803 incidents that happened to approximately 75 um, Africans taken by the whites for slave trade. When they were on that voyage, sea voyage, they actually chose death by drowning, freedom over slavery. So if you look closely, you will notice the figure of a male form trying to wrap himself with a cool colored wrapper. This is just a symbolism to ask, do you cloak yourself in your own self-validation or do you give your body bare for external factors or for other humans to cloak you? You're not a child anymore and as children, our parents dress us, but we get to a certain stage, we dress ourselves. So feel complete in your own self and choose freedom over slavery. Just like the 1803 slaves chose to feed off over slavery. So that's what this work represents. This second work is titled Optics. I'll start with this phrase Don't look away from the light, face it head on, let it blind you, only then can you see clearly. This is just about the saying that ignorance is not an excuse. Sometimes we are so afraid to face the truth that we choose to live in ignorance and we choose to live in self-denial. This talks about morals, anything that has to do with facing the truth. You can come from the aspect of politics, individual issues, individual situations. So this is the figure of a, um, this is the form of a female figure holding a lantern and looking away from the light, which seems too bright if you look at it. So this wrapper behind the lantern is actually greatly symbolical to me because this wrapper has been part of my family in Anambra for as long as I can remember. It has been my mom's wrapper and sometimes we use that wrapper as the bed sheet in our home. So it is this symbolical. And right now um, in my room here um, in Osaka, I have that wrapper in my room. So it's a deep connection. It's very really symbolical here. It represents continue a continuum of memories, a continuum of self-recognition and self-awareness. So that's what this whole talks about. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everybody. 
okay, I'm the owner of this, the tree, the um, lovely piece. So the first one here is titled um, Asam Pete, which means beauty. Yeah. So the work is just all about beauty, both inner and outer beauty, as you can see. And the work, I got the inspiration from a friend. He's part of the exhibiting artist. She's actually a very beautiful soul. Like, my journey in UNN has been amazing thanks to her. I'm Abba Fosina. <laughs> yeah, she's a fashion designer. She's an amazing person. Like, so this work is dedicated to her. And the next one here is titled One Name. And one name here is Present Sisters. Yeah. Um, one name here represents the stars, and as you can see, the two models here are both my younger sisters, and they both share this lovely relationship. Even though they have the age, their age difference, the model this here, she's my immediate younger sister, Chiamaka, and then the other one is Chinini, our last one. The age difference is 12 years, but their relationship is amazing. If you don't know them, you won't even know they have that age gap. And I love watching scenes of them together. So I decided to make an artwork for the both of them. Sister, like I have four sisters and they are amazing people. They are people who I can count on, people who I, I tell my worries a lot, anything I have, a lot of things. I always talk back to my sisters. So this artwork here, is for every sisters. It's dedicated to every sister out there. The relationship always um sorry um always count on your sister. They are always they will always be there for you no matter what. And the last sorry the last at all which is titled God's flower. Um, this artwork is okay. Sorry, God's flower here represents the beauty of nature. Uh, flower, as we all know, is just one of the very beautiful natural resources, and also women, not just flower. So that is. What, that is basically what this artwork is just all about, the beauty of nature, which is God's flower. And if you notice one thing about all my art paintings, they all have body painting. I'm also a body painter, I enjoy the body painting a lot. The um, body painting is one of the first art I started doing, even before I got admission. I didn't study art in secondary school, but I always loved doing body painting because it's one thing that my siblings, my younger siblings, because they knew I could do it, so they would always want me to do it for them. So I just said to start incorporating it in my artwork. That is why all my artwork has body painting and also the afro. If you see, if you, can, I can, if you notice, they all have afro hair also. Yeah. It's just that I'm, I made my hair now. If not, I'm always on afro hair. I love the afro hair. So like it represents the African woman. So I love all my works. So have it. Thank you. Okay. Um, good day. My name is Ezeke Joko Emmanuel Onye Kachi. Okay. And um, this work here, regarding my work here, titled Hope, meaning Olilanya. This work was actually gotten from my um, reflection back to my childhood. There is a question I actually asked myself and I sometimes try to reflect on it like this. What do you do when your hope dies? Where do you turn to? What is your next step when your hope dies? Olinanya, when people have a dream for the future, there's actually a there's actually a a this ignite to keep moving forward. Okay? So this work, Olinanya was tied to it was gotten from the inspiration of my childhood. I actually came up from a very noble family, um, well trained. But in, in the process of growing up, I noticed some challenges with my parents. I noticed that we, are, um, we moved from the north, from Kaduna, 
to the East because of the war that was happening during that time. And sometimes I look at my parents and I wonder, how was it that they were able to keep moving despite all these things? And sometimes I look at them and they keep inspiring me to tell me that there's hope, there's a future after this. And during this process, things happened. I, in 2020, after the COVID, I lost my dad to an illness in us when he traveled to the East. And during that point, I asked, my, I asked myself, what do I do now my hope is dead? I actually lost hope in myself because I saw my dad as one of the motivating factors pushing me forward in the future to further my art, to look forward to the future. But when he left, I almost quit school. And I was in myself thinking to myself, how do I move forward? And that's why I came up with this work, Olilanya Hope. I had hope in the future because I knew that if one does not value the life that he has now, we have only one life to live. We have only one life to live. So if one does not value his life, that means he's left just to keep drifting to one dies. So I had to take up my staff myself and then keep forging forward, knowing fully well that I don't have a dad. I need to keep catching for my family and for the family that I don't have yet. Knowing fully well that with hope, we can really achieve whatever we want in life. I am Bomada Abba Postina, Abumoyen Soka, Umruboli Titi. I am a Niru, Bo, Orum Jiraka Moro, Afeabo, Ijele Wani. I am a Gosiri Wani Mbo Keta. Na fi se garaga abom mata kere we batani me nsuka atu we chokuta na haji otutu ngwa oro na arukuta oro aka ngwa oro dika akpo okpa okuchibot osisi ma ndi ozo onyere mo bi amuri na ndi igbo banyi kajikwa ngwa oro haji arukwa oro Nangwebo <laughs> I will see you. I I'm the creator, I'm the artist behind this artwork, this lovely thing. This artwork is titled as Ampete, and which means beauty. The artwork, like I said earlier, was inspired by my friend, who is an amazing person. She has both the outer and the inner beauty. The work in them, no. I found the mazi inya i iboko. I be money sino laro center for memories in Chetandi ibo. We go see I married her tabo. We can in ande um soccer art school. We have to go soccer art school. The Kadara Kono where where we go there. All day we came by na anye mere inye ngosia, but kana usoka asku bo niye ndi ibongwe aine kedemdo wani ne ndi omenka 
ana azopta na nsoka Diego oru aka fa bi fa mana mbo wani ne so odi mpa na center for memories ni efa oyele iji we gosi ndi nke na puta ndi nke puta no na akwo class of 2022 odi mpa na enye efa oyele ka gosi ihe anweri ke ime ka gosi odiri ozuzu na odiri ozuzu na mota anwetere na nsoka um, art school and in ibakwa no na center for memories na anya fu ife ngosi ha ibere ba fu iga fu no bi ife di mma ife di omime obri fa ga kwalo gi o ife go age ji aka gi we bia we gba ro nwe ye kere space we bia fu aka olo ndi ba anyi ana azu na nsoka art school na na emeputa so em ina anya ofuma ife kwa na oru aka di chiche awe nke ndi obo na kpo medium ese different medium we me negosipta emu otu umu akwukwa asi we we inye onyinye enwe na ali igbo we we rukwa no em inye juwe guzie umu igbo we jiri we me me pote ife so na a a yo onye obo na onye na fubere inye ngosi ya ya gba mbo barata na center for memories ko were ko were anya gbaru inye kere si we fi fine ile dalo no ide wona